Okay, let's, and did you say you wanted to go on the record or no? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, let's go on the record on cause number DC206862, Caldwell v. Caldwell. Council, make your appearances. Gaylene Rogers Lonergan for uh, plaintiffs Wilbert Caldwell, Jerome Caldwell, Rita Brown, and Keith B. Caldwell as legal heirs of Eva May Caldwell, deceased. Patrick Babb here on behalf of defendant Clarence Edward Caldwell. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed. It looks like we had a motion for continuance of the summary judgment, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I apologize for the lightness of that. Well, and, and, and if I could, Your Honor, it's not only was it late, I, I didn't receive it until 922 this morning. Uh, she, she said she filed it on Friday. I, it was not served. If it was filed on Friday, it was not served until her assistant sent it to me at 922 this morning. So we, we submitted it to the court at three, about three o'clock on Friday. And I, uh, I, I guess it was not accepted until this morning so that the e-file, uh, email notification did not go out till this morning. I realized that over the weekend and had my assistant send it to Mr. Babb as soon as we could. Well, I, I didn't get an email notification Friday. If it's filed in the case, I would receive an email notification. Was, you guys would have filed, had to take me off the service accepted. list. So I'm assuming that's when the emails go out is when it's accepted. All I can say is that on the system, it says that it was filed on Friday. So I'm I don't know when Mr. Babb, it should have gone to Mr. Babb at the same time is my understanding. Yeah, I thought that but was I, automatic, Your Honor. Um, but in the, in the short time that I've had to review it, uh, there are a number of objections that I, I, I want to assert before we get into the sure. sort of merit argument. First, so why, why, don't we, why don't we let her make the argument on the yes. continuance and then you can make your arguments on the objections to the continuance. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, um, on this case, our, we were originally set for trial back on the first day of the snowstorm. Um, I had no power, no heat, no internet, no phone. Um, I did call, go out and charge my phone and call Mr. Babb to see if we could agree to an extension. And you, he spoke to you and granted, you granted an extension of the trial to March 30th. Then um, on the 22nd of February, which was the day after the first business day after the snowstorm, apparently I was uh, served with a notice of setting for hearing of a motion for summary judgment. I did not see that email. That is my that is my problem. And from the 23rd of February through today, my husband, who's in advanced stage dementia, has been in the hospital. So I I don't have a, a good I don't have as serious a story as the prior counsel, but uh, I do have some justification for my issues. In the meantime, Mr. Babb and I agreed to a mediation, which is what I had always hoped we would, could do and mediate and resolve this issue for March 11th, which we had. It was an eight hour mediation. And by the end of it, we were very, very close to a settlement. Uh, I, Mr. Babb asked that I get back to him by three o'clock on March the 12th with my client's response, which I did. And then I received no response from him back. I mean, we were within about $20,000 of agreement. And my client was willing to negotiate on that, but we had no response. So finally, late afternoon, whenever I didn't receive a response back, I did file this motion for continuance to give us a chance because we do have some very valid arguments that would keep this from being a summary judgment in that we have multiple, multiple, multiple deeds that Mr. Caldwell had uh, claims that were signed by my clients and uh, even correspondence from Mr. Caldwell indicating possibly that he understood what my client, why my client was upset. So, uh, what I would like, I mean, I was planning on pre preparing for the trial on March the 30th and this summary judgment 
for today, I will, I will admit, caught me by surprise. That's really all I have to say on that. Okay. May I respond, Your Honor? You may. Thank you. First, the motion for continuance is not verified. It's an opposed motion. And there's no affidavit attached to it. The only reason that, that this motion for continuance is filed is an attempt by the plaintiff to backdoor a bunch of unsubstantiated, unverified evidence. It's not as though the witnesses were not available. We mediated Thursday. And she, if she, she claims that she didn't, you know, she didn't know about the summary judgments hearing somehow until Thursday, despite her assistant, the record showing her assistant opening it three minutes after it was served. Uh, she, she still waits until the end of the day, Friday, to file a motion for continuance and then serve it on me 38 minutes before a hearing. Uh, so I've got a lot of objections to the motion itself. Uh, Further, it, it doesn't seek to enlarge discovery. The discovery period's over. If you'll recall, uh, as counsel suggested, during the snowstorm, we were set for trial and there were power issues, including with your honor. And I appeared on behalf of Ms. Lonergan and rather than trying to, to slide some way of getting a judgment, I said, no, I, I told her we could agree to this extension. It makes all the sense in the world. Let's move the trial back. Uh, you were not necessarily excited about moving it back too far, but we wanted to provide enough time for mediation. If you'll recall, I suggested uh, Judge Ginsburg, and we did mediate with Judge Ginsburg on Thursday for five hours. Uh, my client put an offer on the table that expired at 3 p.m. Friday, uh, so no response was needed. It was made clear when the offer was, was extended that there are no counters. This is a uh, take it or leave it, it's done. Uh, and, and I don't want to get into the substance, obviously, of that on the record, but uh, uh, Ms. Lonergan, you know, chose to counter knowing that there was a summary judgment hearing on Monday. That's, that's the risk she decided to take, her client decided to take. Uh, and I think to then allow her to file a wholly improper motion for continuance at the 1159 hour, uh, would be entirely unfair to my client when we've prepared this summary judgment. It's been on file for weeks. Uh, it's not as though the, the notice went out the week of the snowstorm. We couldn't even get the hearing set until the week after the snowstorm uh, due to the power issue. So we, we didn't set the hearing until after the snowstorm. And I know that Ms. Lonergan had email connection because we did email during that time. So I, I think it's wholly disingenuous to, to suggest that uh, this is anything other than an attempt uh, to throw out excuses and, and try to sway the judge by suggesting that there should be, that, that it should consider this evidence that's attached to a motion for continuance that's not validated. It's a, there's correspondence from someone named Chubb, who's not even a party to this case. Uh, and, and then there's several deeds, but the, the, even the deeds that she includes wouldn't even controvert one of the properties subject to the motion for summary judgment. So I would ask that the court allow us to proceed with the hearing on summary judgment today. Response? Well, Your Honor, uh, first of all, Chubb is the nickname of Mr. Co Mr. Babb's client. Um, and like I said, I, um, I, I, I don't have a great deal of excuse for that. My, my assistant the day after the snowstorm, I don't know what my assistant did, but I was not advised in any way that this was this hearing had been set. Um, I, like I said, I was proceeding with preparation for trial on March 30th with a hope that the mediation on March the 11th could resolve the issue in time for a settlement. Um, as far as the reason that I, it's not verified, again, we were trying to settle. We had spent five hours the day before, were very close to a settlement. My clients wanted to offer, and I, at no time was I told it was a take it or leave it, you can't, you can't counter, okay? So well, I was told we had till three o'clock to get back to them, which we did while I was trying to resolve 
you know, what we're trying to resolve to get settled. And we're very, very, very close to settlement. And uh, so at three o'clock, I, I said, okay, I don't have any choice but to try to get a continuance of this summary judgment so that we have time, I have time to get prepared for it because we do have valid arguments against what they're proposing. So let me say this, I, I am concerned. I mean, the rules do provide that you have to have an affidavit that supports your motion for continuance. I mean, that's extremely okay. clear in the, in the rules that you have to do that. It doesn't seem like there was an affidavit. Is that, is that correct or, that or no? Is, that is correct. Uh, do you guys both have uh, access in terms like you, could you call your clients right now? What, what I'm, I'm thinking of doing is putting you guys into a breakout room, see if you can reach a final settlement uh, and then come back in. If you can't, then I can finish the summary judgment hearing. But do you have, would you be able to call your clients? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Well, I, 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 there, there are a couple issues with that, Your Honor. I, my client is at work. Um, but I can probably get his wife to call him directly and get him on the phone. Uh, there, there is the problem that she represents four or five individuals. Uh, Who did, your, your client or her client? Her client. Her client is four or five individuals, apparently. So yeah, that's, would, that's true, Your Honor. I, uh, the heirs of Ms. Caldwell, who is deceased, um, Mr. Babs Klein is one of them, and there are three others, including Mr. Caldwell, who Wilbert Caldwell, who's leading uh, leading this group. But um, we have contacted. I mean, we we could be in contact with them. Another option is I could have you guys come back at 1:30. Uh, I, I want to give you guys one last shot to try to settle this if you can. Um, you know, I share Mr. Babb's concern that there wasn't an affidavit attached to the summary judgment continuance, but, you know, uh, these are strange times and we have, you know, weather apocalypses and a pandemic and everything. And so I am a little bit more flexible than I would normally be uh, because of that. So sometimes when you have uncertainty like you do right now, Miss, and I don't know how to say your name, ma'am, Miss Lonergan. Lonergan, Miss Lonergan. <laughs> Uh, there is, you know, the, the risk that you could get complete summary judgment against you or uh, Mr. Babb, I may continue it. Um, so uh, I think that that's always a good time to try to settle it. Do you want to try to, you know, to put you in a breakout room and you guys can chat and try to get your clients on the phone or would you rather just come back at 1.30? Well, I, I think, Your Honor, the, the breakout room, given what what you're talking about as a strategy for potential settlement would probably be more effective at this point if, if we're saying, hey, look, in three minutes, we might turn around and go hear this summary judgment. So I would suggest we try that. If we can't get our clients on the phone, we can come back uh, and Perfect. report to you and say maybe 1.30 would be better. I think that's a great idea. I'll go ahead and assign you guys both the breakout rooms. Give me one second. Make sure that you accept the invitation. And just come back into this room when you're done, just to report what happens. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Look. Honor. Okay. Let me get to the next case. It's been a busy morning. Bless you, Reagan. All right, I think we're on Ventura v. Brooks. Anyone here on that case? Yes, Your Honor. Jessica Gonzalez and uh, Cassandra's on as well. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So this is a motion to reinstate? Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, go ahead and tell me what's going on. Uh, well, this, this case was... It was filed uh, last year. Um, we've been trying to we have been trying to serve the defendant uh, for quite some time. Um, you know we you know did a, a skip trace um, on the defendant. Um, we haven't been able to serve the defendant. Um, uh, the case was set for DWAP um, or status conference on October twelfth and was dismissed on the nineteenth on October nineteenth. 
Um, and we filed a motion to reinstate within the, the deadline um, on November 18th. Um, it was not set for a hearing, um, and uh, but we still haven't been able to serve the defendant. We're asking the court um, to uh, use its discretion under the emergency orders to see if we can attempt to try to find um, the defendant one last time, uh, especially considering that you know stuff has been open um, after the governor's announcement last week. We're hoping that we maybe have better luck um, trying to find her. Um, if not, um, you know, we will try, you know, maybe service by publication or just talk to our client and, and explain what's going on. Um, so, you know, we we're asking um, the court to just reinstate it, you know, give us a little bit more time to see if we can, you know, give one more crack at it. Um, and if not, then, you know, notify the court that if we just can't find the defendant and then, you know, we'll talk to our client and clear it off the court's docket after that. Has this already been dismissed for one of prosecution once? I look, that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out the, or was there, I'm looking at this. Let's, let me kind of show you on the screen because I'm, so you filed a, so there was a, this was, Dismissed for one of prosecution looks like on October 19th. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. So you filed in January. Uh, we set it for dismissal in October. So that's quite a while. Uh, we dismissed it. Then it looks like we, well, Filed a motion to reinstate in November, but I don't think we ever got that set for hearing. Uh, and then you filed another one. On, so I guess it was dismissed way back in October. That's way past my plenary jurisdiction. Uh, but under the under the the emergency orders, um, it it allows the court to. Um, extend any of those deadlines uh, up to 180 days. And so, you know, we're asking that the court use that discretion um, and give us, you know, a little bit more, op another opportunity to see if we can get her served. Um, you know, if not, like I said, we'll talk to our client, let her know what's going on, um, you know, or tip service by publication. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll re, I guess I'll reinstate this. Go ahead and put together an order that it's based on the emergency, uh, yeah, the, the Supreme Court's emergency orders. Um, and, you know, I would, it, anyway, yeah, go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. And Rhonda, go ahead and put this on a, just, uh, I guess, uh, Put this back on the dismissal docket for, for uh, 45 days, Rhonda. Thank you, thank you, Judge. Let me make sure that she may not be on right now. Let me, but she got it, okay. All right, well, it's good to see you. Likewise, Judge. Okay, you be safe. You too, have a good rest of your day. You too.